Hi, I'm Michelle, and today I'm going to guide you through a series of research-based exercises. Now these exercises can reduce back pain, and they're usually appropriate if you've had a vertebral or spinal fracture at least three months ago. Now, make sure you avoid these exercises if your fracture occurred within the last three months, or if you've got pins and needles and, or numbness, or if there's some other reason, general health reason, that you can't exercise. Instead, please consult with your health professional for the correct exercises for you to start with. Now, the only equipment you'll need today is a chair to sit on and either a towel, so I've got my hand towel here, or a bathrobe tie, okay? So either one of those things. Now, these exercises are taken from scientific research and this research included exercises to reduce upper back pain in individuals with a history of osteoporosis fracture in the spine. Today, I'm going to guide you through a series of four exercises, and then I'll discuss how often to do these exercises at home. Just a reminder, all these exercises should feel really comfortable while you're doing them and afterwards. And in the unlikely event that you experience any discomfort, obviously stop the exercises or modify them in the way that I'm about to show you. Let me know in the comments below how you find these exercises today. I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get started. We're going to commence with posture. First, let's start practicing good posture. Now, this is one of the most helpful exercises to practice regularly to prevent crush fractures and also to, to stop you slumping forwards like this with rounded posture. And you can see that on the screen here. And this is because slumping forwards presses the vertebra together. As you can see on the image here, that causes a spinal compression fracture when the bones are squashed together if they're brittle. They'll crush into each other. Now, to start, I'd like you to start by sitting tall away from the backrest of your chair. Step one is to gently lengthen your spine. And you can do that by lifting the crown of your head towards the ceiling. So you're imagining this a string pulling up and lifting you upwards. Step two involves raising your chest bone forwards. And I'll do this sideways so you can see me. So it's like this, okay? So string there or string there and a string there. Try to keep your shoulders relaxed away from your ears and make sure that you don't arch your back inwards too far because that might feel uncomfortable. So keep this really comfortable for your back. Now let's do this exercise together. Lengthen your spine, lift up through the crown of your head, just slightly raise your chest forward just a little bit and feel how your shoulder blades move together slightly and downwards. And maintain that position now for a couple of breaths. Breathing in and breathing out. And again, breathing in and breathing out before relaxing down. Try to repeat this exercise during the day, increasing how long you can hold the position for as you breathe normally. Now, our next exercise helps you reduce stiffness in your upper back. And this can also help to reduce pain. I want you to keep this exercise smooth and gentle at home. Again, start sitting tall with the good posture that I just taught you. Keep both of your feet flat on the ground and your knees are about hip width apart. Now fold your arms across your chest, lengthen your spine, take a slow deep breath in and very slowly turn your upper body towards your right. Just rotate a small way, just a very slow movement and come back to centre. Breathe in again. And now rotate your chest and your shoulders towards your left. And come back to centre. Have a rest. Let's do that again one more time. This should feel really comfortable, smooth and slow. Breathing in. And rotate just to the point feels comfortable. Breathe out. And come back to centre. And once more, breathing in. And breathing out and come back to center and take a breather. Now our next exercise helps you to open your chest to improve your posture and stop you slumping forwards. When the muscles in your chest become tight, they can pull you forward and round you forward like this. 
So start this exercise by raising your hands so that your fingertips touch just behind your ears. If you can't reach your head, instead you might like to put your hands on your shoulders like this. Now, sit tall, using the good posture that I've already taught you, breathe in, and now breathe out and gently move your elbows back as far as you can take them. And let's come back through again. I'm going to turn side on so you can see that again. This time we're going to see if we can hold a bit longer. So breathing in and breathe out. Really try to bring your elbows back as far as you can and hold for one, two, three, four, five, and release. Let's do that one more time together. Breathing in and breathing out, taking your elbows back and holding for one, two, three, four, five and slowly release. And you should find that with time and practice, you can get your elbows back a little bit further each time. Now, our last exercise is a series of strengthening exercises for the back and shoulder muscles that stop you slumping forwards and rounding forward like this. So I'd like you to start at home, bring your elbows into your sides like this. Turn your palms to face the ceiling and point your thumbs out. Now you're going to move your arms out from your sides, your elbows are rotating outwards, but keep your elbows touching your waist. So you can see, I'm not doing that. I'm keeping my elbows fixed, touching my waist as I turn my forearms out and back together. Now you have a try at home. So palms facing the ceiling, thumbs pointing out. Move your forearms out in that direction and bring them back together, great. Let's go again. This time, feel your shoulder blades move towards each other and down slightly. Good, and come back. Let's go again. Squeeze the shoulder blades together and make your shoulders come away from your ears. Great, and back, and one last time. Squeezing, and let's take it back. Now, to progress that exercise, you can use your towel or your bath throw. Take it in each hand and your hands are about shoulder width apart. Start by sitting tall, thumbs are pointing outwards again, and now we're going to try to do that same action by turning our hands outwards and pulling against each end of the tie, but not moving. So here we go. Pull outwards just gently, squeeze your shoulder blades together, and slowly release. Let's go again. Pulling out, remember your elbows are staying into your waist, aren't they? Squeeze between the shoulder blades, feel the back of your shoulders working, and release. And let's do one more of those. Elbows touching your waist the whole time. Squeezing your shoulder blades, and let's slowly relax. And you can take that down. So how often to do these exercises? Well, try to do these exercises daily. Perhaps you might find them helpful doing them in the morning and again later in the day. Or with the exception of the strength exercise, the last exercise, you might like to do that three days a week if you can. Remember to do what feels comfortable for your body and you'll probably find that you can gradually progress with more exercises and longer holds in time. And you can check the description below for how many of each exercise to do. Now let's review the daily exercises we've covered. We talked about your posture exercise sitting tall, your trunk rotation exercise, the chest opener stretch, and finally we did our back strengthening exercises to do on three alternate days of the week. I will be bringing you more osteoporosis strength exercises and you can subscribe below and click on the bell to avoid missing those videos. So I really hope these exercises give you an understanding of the types of exercises for managing crush fractures and back pain. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you next time.